most of the jobs that we do are suicides. Then there's another 10% that, that are actually crimes or homicides of one sort or another. And then the rest of it would be um, decomps where the body might be a natural death, might be a suspicious death, but the body's been there for a while and is decomposed. It's a big part of our work. When I started the job, I started out with a friend as a partner, and she said, well, what kind of jobs are we not going to do? And I said, no, that's the totally wrong attitude. There's no such thing as a job we are not going to do. The only question is, how much is it going to cost? We will do anything. We will go anywhere to do this kind of work. Every job requires two people um, for a couple of reasons. One is that when you're that close to it, after a while, you just don't see it. So we check each other's work constantly to make sure that we're not missing anything. Also because it's just easier when you've got two people. Sometimes the job can be a little spooky um, if you're there with, with one guy. So almost every job takes two people. Larger jobs, of course, might take three, four, or five guys. Let me check the other, this room in here. All of our work is done in, um, in, very, in, in, in very unusual circumstances. And we're in someone's home. I mean, we're going through their personal property, we're going through their possessions. We see things about these people that their mama doesn't know. It's terrible what we see. Um, a lot of times, I've had a lot of uh, nurses, you know, or um, officers, police officers say, oh, I've seen it all, you know, I can handle it. I, I, don't, I don't get upset about seeing, you know, somebody's brains all over the wall. Now that scene looks a lot different two to three weeks later than it does when that officer was there. There's maggots and flies, there's lots of bugs crawling everywhere, the smell is nauseous. And it's a different thing because you're in someone's home. It's not just happening on the sidewalk out in front of the street. The compassion and, and understanding that you have to work with, with the people that you have to deal with, is very difficult in this job. Um, men, although they are probably can be very technical, I have a feeling that, uh, that women are, are a lot more compassionate and empathetic with the kinds of people that we have to deal with, on, really on a day-to-day -day basis on each and every single job we do. Frankly, all the guys I work with are extremely macho kinds of guys. And sometimes that can be a little frustrating and a little difficult to work with, especially when I'm trying to explain to them why they need to protect themselves at a job and how they need to be aware when they're on the job that they can get contaminated. And the attitude is, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, you know, I never got sick. And basically what I tell them is, you're lucky you dodged the bullet. I said 30 years ago, you didn't have hepatitis B and C to worry about. You didn't have AIDS to be concerned about. You didn't have to worry about taking that home to your children. And what I tell them when we do a presentation is, if it's wet and it's not yours, it's dangerous. I couldn't make a living at what I loved. I loved to read, you know. I loved to make chachkas. I loved to collect antiques. None of those things was making a living for me. This was just something where I saw an opportunity, I saw a need, and I knew it was something that I could do. And, and I did it right, really.